Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'm Suman Dutta from IIT Dhanbad. And now I will give some idea about the synthesis of uh, JDNO and its application for wastewater treatment. And we know that uh, photocatalysis is very much useful for wastewater treatment and uh, different photocatalysts like TiO2, JDNO, they are used as a catalyst. Here we will discuss the synthesis process of JDNO by uh, solution combustion method and we will check how we can change the properties like structural morphological properties of that catalyst. Now question may arise that why uh, SCS method, solution combustion method is important because it is very simple method and one for method. That's why it is very uh, economic for uh, synthesis. And another advantage is that it can produce oil mix without any final calcination, uh, calcination step because any calcination uh, high temperature calcination step is not required for HCS method. Directly we will get the final catalyst. Now here what we will do, we will synthesis, uh, we'll synthesize the catalyst at uh, three different condition. One is uh, fuel in condition, another is fuel rich condition and another with stoichiometric condition because we can change the amount of fuel and we can modify or we can control the structure, uh, morphological or uh, photocatalytic structure of that catalyst. Now, in this study, what we'll do, we'll synthesize this uh, JDNO catalyst, then we'll use for uh, dye degradation, mainly we have used orange G dye as a uh, model dye. And this is the uh, reaction generally we use for the synthesis of uh, uh, JDNO catalyst by SCS method. Here we are using zinc nitrate as our uh, precursor and we are using urea as fuel. Earlier we have said that we can change the amount of fuel. So here what we have to do, we have to change the amount of or we have to uh, vary the amount of urea so that by that way we can change the this parameter phi parameter and whenever we are using stoichiometric amount phi will be equal to one and if it is higher than that then it, it will be greater than one and if it is less then it will be less than one. and from this reaction you can see that if you are using stoichiometric amount of fuel, then no excess amount of oxygen is uh, required because this term will be zero. And if we use high more than one, then we need some excess amount of oxygen for the combustion method. And we have synthesized different catalysts. Uh, and here we are giving name sampling like this. So, uh, this uh, term 0 0.06 is for high value and this term is for temperature value. So, uh, this uh, J10 UR 0 0.6 400 means it is synthesized at 400 degree centigrade and with uh, 0 0.6 uh, fuel uh, ratio. And we have synthesized a different fuel ratio like 0.6, 1. 1.8 and 5.4 and different temperature also like uh, 400 degree centigrade, 500 degree centigrade and 600 degree centigrade. So that means we are changing phi value as well as temperature value. And by mm, changing those two parameters, we can control the morphological and uh, photochemical property of the catalyst. And after synthesis of that catalyst, we need some characterization. And these are the method, different methods in ILU use to uh, characterize um, those catalysts like XRD, <coughs> same uh, image, then BET surface area measurement, and uh, 
over size distribution. After that, we have to check in which uh, in which nanometer range it is working. Means we have to check the UV uh, property of that catalyst. After that, PL also is required. <coughs> that is one type of uh, photo uh, related uh, property. And after that, uh, we have to check uh, TGA and DTA uh, for checking the thermal property. So these are the general characterization we used for uh, um, to check the properties. And after that, after synthesis of the catalyst, we have to use for photocatalytic reaction. And uh, I have al already said that we, we are using uh, orange as our model type. So um, this model uh, orange G we are using as uh, dye and we have to degrade this orange D dye at different conditions. So here you can check that condition is catalyst concentration is gram per liter and we are using 250 watt uh, uh, mercury lamp for irradiation and the volume of the react uh, reactor is 500 ml. <coughs> and here you can see the uh, reactor system. This is schematic of that reactor and here you can see uh, different steps. So first we have to prepare the solution. Then this is reactor. This and this is schematic diagram of this reactor. And after that we have to separate the catalyst particle. Then we have to check the concentration. And in this reactor, if you see, we have uh, this lamp, UV lamp, and here we can uh, supply cold water to control the temperature because here we are. Uh, using 30 degree plus minus 2 degree centigrade temperature. So the temperature we have to control using this uh, water circulation jacket. <coughs> and after this uh, synthesis of the catalyst, we have to check, uh, already I have said in previous slide that uh, DTATG we have to check and we have used this 10 degree per minute heating rate and 100 ml per uh, minute air flow for this purpose. And here it is the result. Uh, we have done TGA DTA for different uh, um, catalyst. In uh, initial, we have done for urea only means which is our fuel. We are using as fuel. And we can see that after uh, uh, 150 degree centigrade at around 150 degree centigrade, 65 percent weight loss is there. So this is mainly because of the evaporation of water because we are mixing some amount of water. And again, you can see some exothermic and endothermic reactions or steps are there. And here also we are doing the same TGA DTA uh, reaction. Uh, uh, characterization, but uh, with phi equal to 0 0.6. There we have on, done only for uh, urea. Here we are doing the same thing for uh, mixture of fuel and uh, <coughs> fuel water and that uh, zinc nitrate. And you can see uh, again at around uh, 160 degree centigrade. It is some evap water evaporation is there, then 7% weight loss is there again in between this temperature, 160 to 290 degree centigrade due to this endothermic reaction. And another exothermic reaction is also there here at around 310 degree centigrade. And uh, if you see after this temperature, 10, uh, 3, 110 degree centigrade, there is no significant loss of weight. That means reaction is completed at this temperature, 310 degree centigrade. And same analysis is done with high equal to one. And we have similar uh, characteristic, but temperatures are different here also. You can see that temperatures are a little bit different. It is moving up to five. 24 degree centigrade. 
and same analysis again we have done for phi equal to 5.4 means uh, fuel rich condition when phi equal to more than one means fuel rich condition so same analysis is done with fuel rich condition and again we can see that this is some endothermic reaction and some exothermic reactions are also there and here the main difference is that that uh, mass loss is is continuing up to around 600 degree centigrade so that means it will take uh, long time and temperature to complete the reaction whenever you are using more amount of fuel means fuel rich condition and another analysis is done xrt that is uh, at different condition here you can see that temperature is fixed but this phi value is different here it is one here it is 0 0.6 1 1.8 and 5.4 for this condition you can see uh, for 5.4 phi and 400 degree centigrade it is amount first condition but for other uh, 1.8 1 and 0.6 these are uh, crystalline structure is there so we can check through jp uh, jcpds um, and we, we can see that this is woodchite structure and same analysis it is done but here you can see this phi value is same but at different temperature so here it is phi value is 0.6 but we are using different temperature for synthesis say 400 500 600 degree centigrade that means whenever at a particular phi value we are increasing the temperature this intensity is also decreasing here also you can see for 5.4 phi value means a fuel rich condition at 400 degree centigrade there will be no peak that I have we have seen in last slide also here it is there is no peak means it is amorphous condition but if you are increasing the temperature from 400 to 500 and 600 then we will get crystalline structure again that means with 5.4 uh, 5, uh, 5 if we increase the temperature 500 and 600 we will get crystalline structure. And in this table, you will get uh, this result in a tabular form. Here we have calculated that band gap value that we will discuss later how it is calculated. And here, crystalline structure, we are using a device error formula to calculate this value. And we can see this value is in between 23 to uh, 79 nanometer. And whenever we are increasing the temperature, there is a chance of prolonged heating. But this is again not desirable because prolonged heating can cause agglomeration of the particles. So what will happen? The um, uh, surface area will reduce. That is not desirable for any photocatalyst because for photocatalysis, we need more surface area. And again, this is another uh, analysis is done using same image. From this same image, you can see here it is a uh, different type of uh, structure is there. Here you can see it is a uh, flake like structure. So here flower like uh, and uh, pyramid shape from this figure and this figure you can see the same. And here it is a seat like structure. Then ignition time, it is again another important parameter because already I have said that if you use more in, uh, or prolonged time for the ignition, then there is a chance of agglomeration. So that is not desirable at all. So we have to avoid that. So, um, we have to identify the ignition time properly and that we can control by changing the fuel amount. 
and the ignition temperature. And this analysis is, uh, we know that this is a nitrogen adsorption desorption diagram and the result here you can see from that uh, data we can calculate the PEP surface area uh, pore size as well as uh, that uh, pore volume. So here you can see uh, for this uh, catalyst, particular catalyst we have maximum surface area 21. So the condition is 5.4 means fuel rich condition and 500 degree uh, temperature and the corresponding uh, pore size is this one and this is this value is calculated from the dye degradation reaction that we'll discuss after some time how it is done. And why uh, this uh, sheet like structure is again important because if it is a sheet like uh, structure, then we have more surface area. And how we can get sheet like structure if, if we have or um, if we generate more amount of uh, gas during this uh, synthesis process. So it will create more volume, uh, for volume, and sometimes it will also create sheet like structure. And from this, uh, we can see that uh, the pore range is in between 2 to 50 nanometer. That in previous slide, we have already seen that. And this is UV spectra. And the result also, you can see that uh, it is changing with temperature and high value also at different temperature and high value we have taken this and uh, the calculated value uh, is around 410 to 480 it is changing whenever we are changing this value from 5.4 to uh, 0.6 means when we are decreasing the high value means from fuel average condition to fuel lean condition then this uh, high, uh, this value is changing, absorption value is changing. And this data is given uh, in table O1 that I have discussed already that EV value, band cap value is calculated and it is given in previous uh, table, table O1. And this data is basically, you can say the dye degradation uh, data. The graph is plotted from this dye degradation data. And if you see, it is uh, almost fitting this condition, pseudo uh, first order condition with the uh, R square value almost 0.98. And uh, if you check, this one will be the best condition, 5.4 and uh, 500 means with uh, 5 value, 5.4 and temperature 500, that synthesized catalyst is the best catalyst uh, as, power, as per our study. And this are the data given in that table already. I will not discuss all this thing. Again, the same thing data is given here. And you can see that here it is at fixed high value, but at different temperature that because we are here, we are comparing the effect of temperature at fixed high value. There we have done the exactly opposite means uh, we have changed that high value with fixed temperature. And we can, here also we can get the effect of temperature.
and we, we can see that uh, at this temperature 500 400 degree centigrade the uh, ignition temperature increases the same thing we have seen that at high equal to 4 uh, 5.4 and uh, temperature 500 and 600 we have better result that means we have better die degradation and this is basically the um, comparison of different uh, result with our present work these are the previous study done by different researcher and we can see that almost similar and I degradation is there in our case we have almost 99 percent uh, removal at uh, 180 uh, minute and the same thing we have seen that these are the best condition 0.54 means full rich condition this is also full rich condition and conclusion the same we can conclude that we, we have to use that fuel uh, rich condition for synthesis of GDNO and corresponding temperature will be uh, something around 500 degree centigrade or 600 degree centigrade okay so this this is our uh, published work the same result is uh, or same work is published in ceramic international if you are interested you can check this paper also okay, this is my address or corresponding uh, correspondence if you have any question you can send through email also thank you if you have any question you can ask